Hello again friends, I'm back and I'm going to continue with the message I did yesterday regarding Speaker's Corner and Hadun and the Muslims and the whole situation. Now my first video I did was um, full with scriptures. I had lots of biblical scriptures to present the case that I was presenting and um, I feel that from the feedback of that video that I did, some of you have not listened to the scriptures that I was presenting. I have read the comments and I'm going to address those opposition based comments because a lot of you disagree and I and I totally understand and I expected to read such comments but I'm going to address them point by point hopefully God willing if I can get through the rest of the content that I want to show you I've got more scriptures to share with you today and also today let me remind everybody that today is the international day of prayer for the persecuted church so I pray that you have been um, reminded of our brothers and sisters and in solidarity with them lifting them up in prayer friends because persecution hasn't stopped the church is persecuted in fact it will get worse and if you're familiar with my channel my content for the past year or so that I've been presenting on YouTube you'll understand that my focus has been heavily on the Antichrist Beast Kingdom and Islam and how Islam is the vehicle by which Satan will use to usher in his wicked beast kingdom on earth just before the Lord Jesus Christ returns so I will show you some of my playlists also to show you especially those of you who don't ever come to my channel perhaps you're new and um, you're not sure what my content is really about I'm just going to show you a few brief clips of what I have already discussed on my channel if you should be interested and in, it's very much scriptural based as I go through the Word of God Bible prophecy and share with you my understanding interpretation by the help of the Holy Spirit anyway without further ado let me continue where I left off yesterday God willing and um, let's see how far I can get on with this subject which is a very serious concerning subject matter at hand friends Okay friends, so before I begin, I think it's important that I, I begin basically with addressing this objection to my video yesterday. Um, one of the comments suggested that this video that I put out yesterday should have been um, not done in public. I should have approached Hatun privately and sorted the matter out that way rather than bringing it to the public arena. I disagree with that and what I did is that I I presented my video biblically with the scriptures backing it up to show you this isn't mere man's personal opinion it isn't a personal opinion piece it's scrutinizing testing the fruits examining the works and going back to the Word of God to see if these things line up with how Christians are meant to believe and our character our, how Christians are meant to behave now, I found this, and I think it's appropriate that I share what I found. It's called, Is Private Contact Required Before Publicly Rebuking Public Sin? Hatun's behavior, the mocking, the insulting, the antagonizing, provoking to wrath, which is a sin, the psychological, emotional, abusive behavior that she carries out, and yes, that is exactly what it is. It's very toxic behavior. That's sinful. It's sinful behavior, and it needs to be called out, and I don't care if I'm the only one doing that on YouTube. Again, I'm not here to get votes, favoritism. I'm not trying to stroke anybody's ego. I'm concerned for the sheep of God, and I'm also concerned that other people are looking upon this whole scenario, this behavior, and thinking, you know, this is... This is acceptable, this is fine, this is how Christians can behave. That is a license to continue the way Hathun has been continuing. And I disagree with it and I'm very upset and displeased at how some of the people who have left the comments on my first video are unable to hear the Word of God for what it is. The Word of God is so clear, very, very plain, and it's telling us the Lord Jesus also himself in his own words has told us how he wants his people to go out to win the lost. He talks about behavior, character, how to deal with criticism, how to handle persecution. The Lord never commanded his people to mock, to insult, to antagonize, to provoke, to wrath, to abuse. You know, we talk about violence, physical abuse, emotional, psychological abuse is just as damaging, just as dangerous, and it needs to be called out for what it is. 
There's no place for this, you guys, in the kingdom. There's no place for it. Is this is is this how believers are ought to behave in the millennium period? Can you imagine in the kingdom? We need to behave as we would behave when the Lord Jesus returns and we get into that city in the millennium. This there's so much stuff that going on at Speaker's Corner is not going to be accepted in the kingdom. I'm telling you that now. So people need to wake up and stop listening to man's opinion, what the mass majority think, and go back into the Word of God and ask the Lord to show and reveal to us His Holy Spirit and conviction, bring conviction into the matter. But what I'm seeing is that people are more concerned about popularity, getting those hits, causing a drama, scandal on YouTube between Islam and Christianity. And you know that's what that's going to do, you guys. Do you understand? My videos on my channel, like I said, are primarily focused on the end times, Bible prophecy, the Antichrist, peace, kingdom. And I've been warning through the word of God, giving you news updates and regarding what's happening in the Middle East and this Islamic appeasement that is happening in the West. I'm very well aware of the appeasement of our leaders in the West, in Europe, and how even the Pope has bowed down and appeased Islam. I'm very much aware of it. But my concern as a believer in Jesus is how do you and I behave? How do we carry ourselves? How do we present ourselves to the world who are blinded by their sin, blinded in their transgressions? Because remember, Satan has blinded them. Do we then for, therefore walk around as though we torment, provoke, antagonize, insult, mock, blind people because they can't see? Or do we show the light of Jesus Christ that they might see, that the blindness might be removed? There's a difference between walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. A very, very big difference. There was a time in my younger years when I was a rebel. I was a tomboy. I was very aggressive. I was a troublemaker, you guys. With peer pressure, I was being conformed into the image of a, a wicked person a bully having physical fights street fights with men and with women this is back in the days when i was a teenager now when we are born again in christ jesus and we are become a new creation all those old things have gone away behold all things have become new the holy spirit begun, begins a work in our hearts in our spirit the work of that transformation, that regeneration work of the Holy Spirit begins in our spirit man. And then eventually the works are seen, there's evidence, there's fruit. We don't behave, we don't continue in the ways of how the world behaves. There's a change. And if there's not a change, then I really question, are people really born again? Or is it just that people have accepted Christ? But what I would like to ask, and it's a very serious question, has Christ accepted you? Has your repentance been sincere? Have you been baptized? Have you died to self? And have you risen anew in Christ Jesus in his likeness? Because he was gentle, humble, meek and lowly. There's a time for righteous indignation there's a time for meekness and gentleness the first video i did addressing this whole situation i was meek i was gentle hope hoping and praying that people would receive that well and yet the stuff that goes on the drama show that happens day in day out at that blinking speaker's corner it get it's getting worse where's the discernment from the elders is there a church present there we are the elders of the church but now it's like each man to his own. People are doing whatever they see fit in their own eyes. Same old rebellion, same old behavior like the children of Israel did back in the days of the Old Testament. Anyway, let's address this. Should I have gone to Hatun in private because I disagreed with her behavior? One common claim is that any disagreement between Christian brothers should always be handled in private. It is said that every disagreement, argument, rebuke, reproof 
or correction should only be made public when one has already contacted them privately and they did not listen. This is often based upon a misinterpretation of Matthew 18 and is scripturally unfounded. And this is what I wanted to say is that often when people within the church, brothers and sisters, are giving out a message of rebuke, correction, exhortation, whatever. There's always somebody who says you should have gone to that person in private. That con that whole context, that narrative in Matthew 18 is regarding personal offences between one brother and another brother that must be resolved peacefully before things can go on as normal. Public rebuke is done when people have publicly misrepresented the gospel behaved sinfully rebelliously when there's a problem it needs to be addressed publicly because it edifies the church it brings to light something that is not right to the masses so they are aware of what is right behavior and what is wrong behavior this practice of not making a disagreement with a fellow christian public hold on let's get rid of that This practice of not making a disagreement with a fellow Christian public is that is one that is not consistent with the actions of the apostles, particularly Paul. I've got a lot more to share with you, friends. I've got some tabs open. I've got some video clips to share with you. Please stay with me. For those who did watch my first video and you listened and you listened to the end, I really thank you for that. But there are many who did not even get through my video but were leaving comments judging a situation before hearing a matter out which is also sinful according to the book of proverbs peter had been very tolerant of a sub-christian sect known as the circumcision party more commonly known as Ju judaizers these people added circumcision to salvation and this tolerance led peter to pull away from gentile christians in order to please these Ju judaizers Peter's acceptance of these false teachers and promoters of heresy led many others to also pull away from the non-Jewish believers, including the missionary Barnabas, Galatians chapter 2. There's a scripture there, but I'm going to read through this quickly. This disagreement was surely public. In fact, Paul said it before them all. Right in front of Barnabas, the Jews, the circumcision party, and probably the Gentile believers, nothing was first said in private. It was clear, public rebuke. This was likely done so that all those who saw Peter's actions, in this case, Hothen's actions, and thought it would be permissible for them to act accordingly, would also stand corrected. Not only did Paul publicly rebuke Peter in that moment, but even afterwards, Paul recorded it in an epistle that he sent to the church in Galatia, a church that had been plagued by this false movement, which was intended to be passed around to different churches and was inspired by the Holy Spirit to be part of the biblical canon for all believers everywhere to read. As far as disagreements go, this was one of the least private disputes in history, and yet it was a dispute between two fellow Christian teachers. But people nowadays want to say, no, we're all one body, we're all one church, you know, let's keep our stuff hush hush. No, that's unscriptural, it's unbiblical. There's no scriptural foundation or backing for that behavior. Judgment between one another within the church is permitted. We are not to judge the world outside for their actions. God will judge those actions. But we are supposed to do that one to another, friends. There have been occasions where Hathun has been approached, apparently. I've seen a video clip of another Christian lady speaking to Hathun very firmly telling her to stop behaving in the manner that she's behaving she doesn't listen Hathen does not listen she refuses to listen contentious spirit is there a contradiction then between matthew 18 and galatians chapter 2 or did paul sin and violate i'm going to go through the fact that there's persecution that islam has caused um, a problem within the west this appeasement of islam and how many governments leaders in our nations are appeasing bending over backwards to appease this population of muslims i am aware of that i talk about that in my videos 
Again, you're not aware, you don't listen to my messages, but I've talked about, I have tons of content referring to the persecution and also this Islamophobic um, climate that we're living in, the alleged, sorry, I mean the alleged Islamophobic climate that we're living in, this political correctness, madness, this appeasement of Islam. There has to be a balance, you guys. And when it comes to the church, we need to be harsher, more strict, and stay on the straight and narrow, you guys. Jesus said, wide is the gate that leads to destruction, and many will go through that. But there's a narrow gate, and there's so few are going to make it. The passage in question was written in reference to the local church as evidenced by verse 17. This is not a universal command for all disputes between believers in all contexts. Therefore, this does not apply to public sins committed by Christians or false professors outside your local body. I just want to remind you, I'm reading this from the pulpitandpen.org, very reputable website. If we are to imitate Paul as he imitates Christ, then we should handle a public sin committed by a teacher outside your body in a public manner. This is to be done so that those who look to their actions and think that they are acceptable, in this case, Hatun's behavior and her actions, thinking that it's acceptable, will see the error and not follow in their footsteps. Certainly it would not hurt to contact them privately, but it is not mandated by scripture, nor was it put into practice by the Apostle Paul. Finished. Right, moving on. This scripture here, as mentioned, I'm continuing on from where I left off yesterday, but I brought that up because I wanted to address that right at the beginning. Please pay attention, listen to the word of God are we able to do that 2nd Timothy chapter 2 approved and disapproved workers this paragraph is subheaded in this edition of the New King James verse 14 Paul is writing to Timothy a younger disciple he's teaching him he's discipling him how to handle things how to oversee the congregations where Paul is sending him. He's entrusting him with a great task. But listen to the advice that Paul, who J. Smith has said, Hathun is like unto, complete contrast. <clears throat> remind them, says Paul, remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. So I would urge those at Speaker's Corner to take heed of these scriptures. Let me repeat. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words to no profit. Oh my goodness, the stuff that I've heard coming out of that park is so sh it's just shameful. It's just... I'm thinking of that whole breastfeeding thing about... Muhammad the breastfeeding thing it was like ongoing ongoing so stupid pathetic idle striving about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers be diligent to present yourselves approved to God a worker does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth that's the focus when one is going out to apparently save the lost but shun profane and idle babblings this describes what Hathen does majority of the time profane and idle babblings for they will increase to more ungodliness and their message will spread like cancer Hymenius and Philippus are of this sort who have strayed concerning the truth saying that the resurrection is already past and they overthrow the faith of some nevertheless the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are, who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, they are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. He goes on. Again, this is Paul 
writing to Timothy to help him, to encourage him, to advise him, to exhort him. <clears throat> Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness. Pers these are things we are ought to pursue. Is this righteous behavior in speaker's corner? I dare someone to tell me that yes, that is righteous behavior at speaker's corner. The Lord rebuke you. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with all those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. If this is the command, friends, how we should ought to behave with one another, how much more so with the world whom we're trying to win over to the Lord Jesus? I pray that many of these people who, who were ex-Muslims who have denounced Islam and renounced Allah Muhammad and who have accepted Christ Jesus are genuinely born again, full of the Holy Spirit, walking in righteousness, in humility, in gentleness, in meekness, bearing the fruits of the Spirit, being discipled by the Holy Spirit. I pray this genuine. This is such a serious concern, you guys, because many will say to the Lord Jesus on that day, Lord, Lord, we did all this stuff in your name. And he's going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. There's a great falling away coming, you guys, before the Lord returns. There's a great apostasy coming before the Antichrist reveals himself. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction and many are going in there. A servant, let's carry on, listen to the word of God. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all and able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. Oh, but somebody said, Speaker's Corner is the last bastion of free speech. You want to give in to the bullies? At what point do we confront the danger posed to us all? Isn't that the government's problem, you guys? The government, the military, the political leaders of our nations? Isn't that their problem? To protect the public from a potential threat? And Europe is facing a threat. The West is facing a threat. In fact, the world is facing the Islamic threat. It's up to the leaders, the government, the military, the politicians, the ones who really, really call the shots, to take responsibility of protecting their borders, their culture, the economy, the population. It's not the responsibility of the church. What do you expect us to do, you guys? go back to the times of the crusades is that where you're going with this really is that the way of christ jesus i am so concerned about this attitude that is out there seriously i fear for these people i've got more to read please stay with me if you can I'm annoyed I am annoyed a servant of the Lord must not quarrel but be gentle all able to teach patient in humility correcting those who are in opposition this is the behavior of those who ought to be reaching the lost in speakers corner if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will ultimately these muslims out there speakers corner they have all been taken captive satan the devil has got them captive so those people who are lost dead in their sins you're provoking to wrath insulting mocking antagonizing them 
abusing them. Verbal abuse is abuse. It doesn't matter what they do to you back in return. My concern, our concern, ought to be what is my conduct? What is my behavior? What is my response? Am I demonstrating the humility, the meekness, the gentleness of Christ Jesus? There were two disciples of the Lord Jesus who wanted to bring down thunder to strike the people who were not listening to Jesus. Did Jesus say, do it? Go ahead, guys, do it. In fact, call down the angels. I back you up. He didn't. He didn't permit it. He shut that whole thing down. I did a video. I'm going to show you that I spoke about the crusades. Oh, it's taking it back there again, isn't it? I had it paused at a particular point in the video. This video I did was regarding the theory that floats around, which is false. Apparently, according to the theory, Islam was created by Roman Catholicism. I was debunking it, and I want to share with you a clip. Hopefully I can get it at the right spot. And I mentioned the Crusades. Crusade to go and stop the Muslim armies from spreading Islam. Let me rewind it. Islam wasn't created to liberate Jerusalem from pagans, that, that the Roman Catholic Church. They had armies. They'll find out later on after, was it 1060 or something, when they went out at the first crusade to go and stop the Muslim armies from spreading. That's, histor that's history. That's historical fact. It's just the way it is, you know. Um... I mean, I'm going to probably hear about this over and over and over again. Um, the evils and the evils of the Roman Catholics doing whatever they're doing with Islam. It's going to continue because deception is rife out there. We've got to be really careful. We've got to be wise as serpents, but gentle as doves. You know? It's the idols of ancient Babylon. That's, that's mystery Babylon. They worship today. The deities of the moon, the crescent moon, the star, they're still worshipped today. These deities are still being venerated as the gods, right? It's still going on. I'm not in denial of that. That's pretty obvious. But the mother of harlots, she sits as a queen in a desert. That's what the Bible says. She sits as a queen surrounded by many waters as a desert, as a queen of the desert. She's a harlot. She's the mystery Babylon. And all these ancient idols, where did they all come from? Did they come from Italy? Did they? Did they come from Italy? You can watch the whole video, friends. I was defending Rome, in a sense, the position, because people like to bash Catholics also, because they can't handle the fact that Islam was the and is the main persecutor of the believers in Jesus Christ, regardless of what denomination. It's been going on for centuries now. We're aware of it. And if it wasn't for the Crusaders, the whole of Europe and the West would have been invaded a long time ago with Islam. I'm aware of history. I do understand that. But there has to be a balance, you guys. We have to remember what we are called to do. Preach the gospel. Let the light shine in the darkness. But I'm thinking some of these people who support this behaviour really want to go back to the times of the Crusades. I'm going to come to some scriptures in a moment. Just bear with me. In Joel, chapter 2, in the end times, the Lord promises this. In fact, Peter mentioned it in the book of Acts, chapter 2. God's spirit poured out, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall antagonize, insult, mock, provoke to wrath, abuse. No. That I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants. I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood, fire and pillars of smoke. This is a glorious time. That is not completely entirely fulfilled. It was it begun at Pentecost. 
in that whole event that took place in the book of Acts in chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the first disciples. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When this happened, this kick-started the wonderful miracles, the ministry of the disciples, the apostles. This is what kick-started it, you guys. Thousands and thousands were being added to the church day in, day out. They went out. They didn't just stay one location. Remember, they were sent out to get the lost saved. They had to move from one place to the next. I think what's happening with Speaker's Corner is that people, I don't know what it is, there's an addiction. It's like they get an adrenaline from this kind of hostile environment. Raymond Ibrahim. I want to play a clip from this video about what happened. And I believe it's at the end of this clip where he's talking. War Room Pandemic with Stephen K. Bannon. The epidemic is a demon and we cannot let this demon hide. War Room Pandemic. Here's your host. Let me get the right part. Oh my goodness. This mouse has just been so... And Scimitar is the book. It's in paperback. You can get it on Amazon. You will not be able to put it there. Just remember, just because we're hurtling towards this election, think of the issues that were in, in 16. Trump broke the back of the physical caliphate up. Trump, on the, on, the, on the travel ban, hey, just saying, have you seen any terrorist attacks since then? Right? That's directly, no conspiracy, but there are no coincidences. One led to the other progressive left suck on that okay i want to now bring in raymond ibrahim tell us what's going on in france tell our audiences what's going on by the way we're going to have the front national guys on tomorrow jerome revere they're going to be a national pulse today at three o'clock um but R raymond walk us through exactly this thing is horrific it's getting worse it's starting to metastasize what's going on absolutely Stephen. um basically as you said a man uh walked in a muslim man into a church and just killed three people beheading one elderly woman um, and it's this sort of thing, you know, to me, it depends on what you know. If, if you're following the mainstream media. But hang on, hang on. Don't, don't, sure, don't, sure, don't sure code it. She was, but who was, how did they do it? Somebody was beheaded. How did the beheading happen? Where did it happen? In the church? In the church, it was an elderly woman because it's so new from the reports that I've seen. Some people are even saying that she just had her throat slit, but it was essentially or nearly a beheading. So I'm not sure if her head was completely severed. I'm sure the intention was there. It may have been. But I don't think, um, and you can imagine all why of you Catholics, to... all of all of you Catholics in Northeast Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin, two random places, embrace this in a Catholic church at a morning mass. A woman, right. an elderly woman, a devout elderly woman, was beheaded by a jihadist. Raymond Abraham, take it from there. And that's why I'm saying, if you know what's going on, this is not surprising because targeting Catholic churches, targeting any church, Orthodox, Protestant churches in the Islamic world and doing what we saw or what just happened actually is very common. It's, it's standard, past and present. If you look at it, if you go to a country like Nigeria, this is a weekly thing that happens, including entering into churches, slaughtering people, massacring them. And so, and, and, and always it's underscored by an, an exhibition of hatred for Christianity. I want you to listen to the whole clip. Please watch um, Raymond Ibrahim begin to follow his work. I have a lot of respect for him. I have a lot of, I, help, I hold him in high esteem. The work that he does is so critical that we understand how bad the persecution and this jihadist behavior is getting, you guys. It's not slowing down. It's not becoming less frequent. It's increasing. It's picking up momentum. What do you want the Christians to do in England, you guys? Do you want to join the far right? Do you want Tommy Robinson to join your camp? And I've done videos about him. I support him. I pray for his protection, his kids, his wife. Because he's seen it. He's seen it firsthand. 
But at what point, friends, do we stop, take a back seat and think about our actions, our behaviour? Because we seem to forget that our citizenship it does is not from this realm, it's in heaven. That's our final destination. But it depends on how we behaved here on earth. There are many people, look, the Lord Jesus said in um the Gospel of John, I don't have it up here right now, friends. In the Gospel of John, Jesus spoke about the vine and he said he's the vine and if you abide in him you'll bear fruit but if we don't abide in him we won't bear fruit and when those branches dry up and don't bear fruit the father cuts them off and throws them in the fire so there are people who can lose that place that position of abiding in christ and get cut off it's serious if god did that with his own people in israel I'm referring to the whole situation with the rebellion, the covenant breaking situation, the divorce, that God divorced his people, the house of Israel. And also read Romans 11. If you understand what I mean, please read Romans 11. If you don't, still, please read Romans chapter 11. How much more ought we ought to be trembling fearfully to work out our salvation the word of god says the righteous will barely make it barely make it so how is a sinner and the wicked going to get in if we barely make it you guys i think people are just thinking you know what we got it we got it sorted just a done deal we're fine we're covered under the blood we can do whatever we want grace covers it don't tempt the lord don't test his patience like that you guys I want to read this excerpt and show you what Jesus said. Matthew 11, verse 25. I read this to you yesterday, I believe. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Jesus says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. Do we not want to be like Jesus? You know, like as Muslims emulate, look up to, follow the example of Muhammad. Ought not Christians want to look up, emulate, follow the example of our Lord Jesus, who was gentle and lowly in heart? Is that screaming, shouting, provocation, mocking, insulting, gentle and lowly in heart? When the Lord Jesus was at his most indignant, angry, was at the religious crowd who ought to have known better but they missed it they missed him they rejected him because they were expecting a warrior messiah they were expecting some military leader to deliver them from the hands of the romans they rejected their messiah you guys because they were looking for somebody else And here comes Jesus, gentle and lowly in heart, and they rejected him. Acts 17, Acts 18, Acts 19, Acts 20. You could read the whole book of Acts and you will see this consistency of how they behaved. Now, I believe I read some of this to you yesterday. But let me go to, let's see, let's go to 19. Watch how a riot kicks off in Ephesus. A riot. What's Paul's response? Well, in fact, what happened? I think it's important for us to read the word of God, the context, to understand and to judge to examine and to test 
was happening at Speaker's Corner because they were liking Hudson to St. Paul, right? Isn't that what Jay Smith said? To a person who wants to be killed, who's seeking martyrdom, and Jay is supporting that. You're just putting a red mark, a target, on Hudson, telling the Muslim world, come and kill her, we're going to sacrifice Hudson. Making a martyr out of her. This is ridiculous. This is so unbiblical, so unscriptural, and I stand by that. I don't care what you other people think about it. But there are sheep out there who are re rethinking and realize what's going on there is not right. It's not right. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Let's see what Paul did. Paul in Turkey. Let's just say this is in Turkey because that's where it is, Ephesus. And it happened. While Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Why was he concerned about the Holy Spirit? Had they received him? Because we can't do anything without his help. We need him. Day in, day out, we need the Holy Spirit. He helps us to do everything, friends. He reveals the Word of God to us so we can understand. He interprets it to us. He gives us courage, boldness. He reminds us of the things that the Lord Jesus told us. He brings that to our memory. He gives us the gifts. I believe they manifest, they become real to us because his presence in us. Discernment, wisdom. He even helps us to pray, intercede with groanings, with utterings that cannot even be verbalized. So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. And Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about twelve in all. But now what's happening? The Holy Spirit is being blasphemed. The name of the Lord is being blasphemed. Jesus Christ's name, his glorious holy name, which ought to be exalted, is being blasphemed by these Muslims who are taking the bait of Hatun's antagonizing, provocative behavior. They're taking the bait. Is there, you know what I'm thinking, is there a better way, is there a better approach that Hatun could use, adopt, without the Lord's name being dragged to the dirt? And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. He spoke boldly, boldened by the Holy Spirit, for three months, reasoning and persuading. That's what happens when you're bold. You don't scream, you don't shout, you don't abuse, you don't mock, you're not insulting, but you are reasoning and you're persuading with boldness concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But this method that I've seen observed for a long time now, nothing's changed, is that the Muslims are treated like crap, mocked, made fun of, like it's a game, like it's a wrestling match, like it's street fighter, spiritual street fighter. So the Muslims are getting more antagonized, more angry, more pissed off. And then you're going to say, oh, but Jesus is Lord. So after all that, after making them feel so bad, so angry, so vexed, you're going to give them Jesus. Are they in a position to receive Jesus then? Or are they going to diss him, reject him, mock the Holy Spirit? You first bring the light of Jesus and the wickedness of Islam will itself be exposed by the light of God.
When the Lord saved me, I wasn't finding holes in the narrative. The Lord Jesus stood out to me in the Quran. I was seeking him. That's how he did it with me. And that's when I realized the Bible was superior. The Lord Jesus is Lord, he's God. Muhammad is false prophet. The whole thing with Islam is from Satan. It took the light to expose the darkness and that's scriptural, you guys. But when someone hard and did not believe but spoke evil of the way, I think I've read all this. I read this before. I read this yesterday. Let me get on. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Wouldn't that be amazing if miracles were done at Speaker's Corner? We should pray for that, friends. Please pray. Pray that the Lord would use the Christians in that region to do mighty signs and wonders. The signs and wonders are given for the lost so they can see and believe. This is the Lord God. But nowadays we've got the false new apostolic reformation movement. We've got the Kundalini spirit, which is the fake Holy Spirit going on right now. We're drawing closer to the end times. The miracles are so amazing, you guys. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. Is this what's going on with Hudson right now? How is she unto Paul? Has she been likened to Paul? And the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the uh, itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. There were also sons of Sceva, seven, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? They did recognize the authority because they were not born again. They were carnal, thinking they could use, peddle the name of Jesus for their own benefit to show off. Then, then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus in Turkey. Can you imagine? This is where it all happened. Look at Turkey today. Sultan Khalif wannabe other one. What does he have planned for Europe and the West and the rest of the Middle East? He wants to intimidate the West into accepting blasphemy laws, blasphemy against Muhammad laws, and enforce the Islamophobia laws. And so is Imran Khan wanting to do the same thing from Pakistan. What are you going to do, Christians in the UK, Speaker's Corner? You're going to fight them all with the sword. Is that what you want to do? Are you going to do what the early church did? This became known to both all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Notice the result, the fruit. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic and brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all and they counted up the value of them and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver so the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed that was the fruit glorious fruit eternal fruit treasures laid up in heaven kind of fruit and notice they themselves bought their books their books together and burned them in the sight of all this is, this is not advocating for you guys ripping up pages of the Quran, chewing, spitting them, burning them. What is that? What are you trying to prove? What's the, what's the demonstration right there? It's provocation upon provocation. You're saying, Muslims, if you're going to do that, we're going to do this. Carnal of the flesh. The more I think about it, the more I suspect in so many who do this stuff, they're not born again. They think they're born again because they accepted Jesus or they know the word of God. They can memorize scripture. Carnal flesh. Where's the spirit? Where's the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit doesn't hang around when there's abuse. He's holy. Holy. H-O-L-Y. Holy. Holy behavior, holy conduct should be the fruit. Good temperament, 
gentleness, meekness, all the fruits he brings with him. And they counted up the value and so forth. The riot, right. The riot to Ephesus, Turkey. It's the Islamic nation today. <clears throat> but this is where the church was and it was persecuted. Jesus Christ himself wrote to the seven churches who were in Turkey. Warning his church. Warning them. To some, he said, do not depart from your first love. I know your works. There are many now than there were in the beginning. But you must hold fast. He commended some other churches, saying, you have not denied my name, even though you are weak. But some churches, I believe it was four out of the seven churches, Jesus Christ, in the book of Revelation, in his glory, when he appeared to John, he rebuked them and told them to repent. Oh no, but we can't say that now about the church, you know, we, we need to go and deal with that stuff in private, so it's not made a, a you know, a drama out of public spectacle. But it's okay for that behaviour to be made public spectacle, in the name of Christ apparently. And people are cheering that behaviour on. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Rattus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time there arose a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines for Diana, which is likened to Baal, Allah, the black stone that fell from heaven, he called them. They were, say, they were facing the same principality that you guys at Speaker's Corner are facing. Do you realise that? It's the same demon God. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia. This is how famous this deity was. This Paul has persuaded and turned away. How did he do it, friends? He persuaded and turned away many people saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute. It's like Saudi Arabia complaining at Christians for bringing so many Muslims to faith in Jesus Christ. No one goes to Mecca now for pilgrimage. It's like that. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Diana, Ashtoreth, Baal, Blackstone. Look into the history of Diana, this god that they were worshipping, and the Blackstone, they're one and the same thing. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath. Just like how these Muslims behave who persecute Christians across Africa, the Middle East, Asia, and now in Europe. And cried out saying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Diana who Akbar is the same spirit. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? Let's use wisdom here, friends. So the whole city was filled with confusion, which is which is just like Speaker's Corner, and rushed into the theatre with one accord. Having seized these two Macedonians, Paul's travel companions, and when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theatre. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused. What comes with the spirit of Antichrist, with the spirit of Islam, with the spirit of Diana, the great of the Ephesians? Confusion, chaos, strife, drama, wrath, death. And most of them did not know why they had come together and they drew Alexander out of the multitude total mess confusion mayhem pandemonium 
The Jews putting him forward, and Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defence to the people, but when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours. Diana Hu Akbar. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Isn't that exactly what Muslims do? This is exactly what they do. It's the same spirit. Are you able to continue listening to the rest of this message, friends? I understand. I do know what you're saying. I know where you're coming from. Those of you who are supporting Hatun's behavior, I do get it. I'm an ex-Muslim too, remember? But the Lord, in his mercy, in his grace, he's so good. He's given me understanding through the word of God how we ought to behave. And many of us are aware he teaches us through the word of God. Not how you think it should be or how it ought to be that way. Christians shouldn't be pacifists, someone said. We need to um, occupy till Jesus comes. Somebody left that comment. What, what do you mean, by sword and shield and buckler? Or by the blood of Jesus or by the word of our testimony like it says in the book of Revelation? Some of you really need to reconsider and test yourself whether you are in the faith or not. <laughs> Watch all the dislikes now on my video. <laughs> and when the city clerk had quietened the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus, just like the black stone in Mecca? Came down from heaven apparently, an asteroid, a meteorite. Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly, for you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. See? Did you see that? For you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another, but if you have any inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly, for we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar, there being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. And when he has said these things, he dismissed the assembly. Hutton does not behave like that, sadly. But poor did. He didn't blaspheme their gods. Did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> Let the word of God <laughs> speak for itself. Acts chapter 20. Do you want me to read the whole thing, you guys? Seriously. Friends, you have your own Bibles. Please read the full account. <sighs> it's a very good book to read the book of Acts when you're doing things like this. Speaker's Corner stuff. It's so good. It sets the example. It tells you. It's just the road map. The road map. How to behave. I can't believe this is about behaviour. It's like uh, talking to children. <sighs> what else should I read from this? Moving from place to place, place to place. They never stayed at the same spot, you guys, unless the Lord specifically commanded it. They moved, they obeyed the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was a person to them. He was real. They obeyed his voice. If he said, go here, they went. If he said, do not go now, they didn't go. He was the leader. Well, let me read this excerpt. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears. Look at this, you guys. Serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. Did he antagonize, provoke them to wrath, mock them, insult them? psychologically verbal abuse them did he did he do such a thing 
how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks. What did he testify? Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what it said in the earlier chapter. They were not blasphemers of their idols. And see now I go bound, bound. You know what that word means. Shackled, chained, bound. He's a slave of Christ. A servant of Christ. A bond servant of Christ. Now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God, not to mock Muhammad holding up cartoons. I have a question. I have a question. What can you tell me about the holes in the narrative? What is that? Just stop it already. And indeed now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. He's given his final words because he knows what's coming. He, know, he knew it. But he was not seeking martyrdom. He wasn't provoking to get martyred like Hathun is doing right now. Which is going to cause a lot of trouble. I've foreseen this, you guys. I saw this a long time ago. And it's happening right now. He's a troublemaker, a provocator, provocator, antagonizer. That's not the spirit of Christ. He needs to repent and reconsider. Reconsider, test, examine herself in the faith. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood so precious words here for I know this that after my departure savage wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock the savage wolves were those who looked like sheep Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves because people look for their own glory to make themselves a name, like J. Smith said. Hathen's making herself a name. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears, with mockery, with insults, with provocations. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities. He worked. He labored for himself while he was ministering. Can you imagine? He was constant. He must have been 24 hours a day doing things, you guys. He, was, he did that to, to set an example, you see. And for those who were with me, he was trying to be all things to all men, friends. Not insulting by all means, all men. He was trying to win them over. So unlike what Hathun is doing. Very unlike what she's doing. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said it is more blessed to give than to receive and when he has said these things he knelt down and prayed with them all then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him you know how many people in Islam well all of them Muslims they diss Paul they hate him
sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke and I feel that I really feel that right now as I'm reading them again that they would see his face no more and they accompanied him to the ship the name of Paul is so disrespected in Islam do you know that it's like the some Jews who disrespect Paul so sad so sad second corinthians chapter four yes it's going to be a long video it's been over an hour the light of christ's gospel let me just skip through this second corinthians chapter four therefore since we have this ministry as we have received mercy we do not lose heart but we have renounced the hidden things of shame not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of god deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God that's how you do it that's how we do it speakers corner crowd are you listening but even if our gospel is veiled it is veiled to those who are perishing whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them for we do not we for we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus sake for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, did they strike back? I've seen Hatuni videos push men over. I've seen her do it. Just yesterday, I was watching another one and she nudged another guy because he was standing in her space. This is not how you respond. This is this is totally the way of the world. This is how the world does it. And Jesus Christ specifically said, we are not to be like the world. That's, I mean, the New Testament. Guys need to get back into the Word of God. Need to get back grounded in the Word of God. Get discipled yourselves, you guys. But not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying of the lord jesus that the life of jesus may be manifested in our body i know that jay smith and hadun have been hit before it's happened before it's happened before but it's because they were insulting mocking antagonizing provoking them to wrath emotional verbal abusing the muslims that's why they were being smacked and beat it wasn't because they were preaching the gospel, giving glory to Lord Jesus Christ, expressing to the Muslims there the plan of salvation, how God in his wonderful mercy worked out this amazing plan of salvation all the way from the time of Adam to the present day when Jesus Christ came and how all the world is lost in wickedness, in darkness, in their sin, in despair. We are all like sheep gone astray and the Lord Jesus bore the penalty of our sin on the cross when he died they don't preach nothing like that there they get beat they get spat on they get um hit because they're pissing muslims off not because of jesus sake and you see the persecution of christians around the world when the Christians in Africa, Middle East, Asia, who are gentle, lowly in heart, serving the Lord Jesus, getting on with their daily lives, providing for their families, just getting along, you know, trying to just get by till the Lord Jesus returns. The most harmless Christians in our world today are the most persecuted. You want to talk about persecution? You want to know what the persecuted church in China has been experiencing? In Korea, in Africa, in Iran, the women in Iran right now are building up the Church of Jesus Christ in Iran in the midst of persecution. You 
and your behavior speakers corner you're the persecutors you're the provocators and then you cry foul or you play victim when you get the violent hostile response For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. This is more descriptive of the church in China, the underground church. How selfless, sacrificial they are. Beaten to death they are. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God, not causing blasphemy of his holy name. Read the whole thing, friends. My oh goodness, there's so much more to talk about. <clears throat> oh, I accidentally shut down a window I wanted to actually talk about. Never mind. Was it meant to be? Was it meant to be? I was looking up a verse in the Word of God here about how they shook the dust of their feet in protest against them and went and moved on. But now what will happen at Speaker's Corner is that they'll keep going back and going back there again and going back there again over like a broken record. Mayhem, confusion, strife, dry branches. While all the people at home watching it on YouTube are laughing, mocking, eating their popcorn. <sighs> Contention. I was looking the word up again. I had to be very careful presenting these videos to you guys. I don't take this lightly. Paul arrives in Rome and lives under house arrest. How many times has the police told Hathun, don't do that, don't, just stop doing that? I'm talking about her behavior as a believer in Jesus and how all the other believers are encouraging her behavior. But that's not what the word of God tells us to do. Paul's response to those in power was so respectful that he could have won them over to the faith. He was very diplomatic, he knew the law, he knew the bounds of the law, he respected authority, he tried to reason with opposition, and Hutton is being compared to Paul, really. Oh my goodness, I can't even go into all of this right now. This is a whole document here. Very well done, it's called enterthebible.org. Paul arrives in Rome and lives under house arrest. Did he go back and cause a riot? Did he obey? He was there for two years, was he not? Analysis, Paul's voyage to Rome. I might put this under the description. It just tells you about how he ended up there. Paul on the island of Malta. Paul arrives at Rome. He's not in one place, is he, friends? Irritating people. People who don't have ears to hear. People who don't want to know. People who are telling you, go away. But we'll go back. They'll just go back and say the same thing. Holes in the narrative. Your prophet is a murderer. Just like, where's Jesus? I'll bet you'll end it with Jesus. Well, after you've pissed them all off. Is that how we do it? Really? Reinventing the wheel, eh? Reinventing the gospel. <laughs> Romans chapter 8 talks about being persecuted. From verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Do you think God condones this behavior, friends? Think about that. 
Think about it. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God. Do you understand? The first church, the early church, the first believers were emulating Christ Jesus. They copied him and he did no way behave the way these people, as speakers called her, behave right now. There's no evidence in the word of God for it. <clears throat> you can like that or you can lump it. That's up to you. As it is written. For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Why is that, do you think? Why, why were they experiencing that? For the gospel's sake. For the name of Christ. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. How beautiful is the word of God. They weren't blaspheming their idols. They weren't making a mockery. They weren't insulting anyone, you guys. How embarrassing. So many times, what's his name? Ali Dawa has been insulting Hatun, but she'll go back again. He tells her, Oh, get away from me. You, you're dirty. Or you're, go and get married. You need a man. You're frustrated. It's just insulting. It's a bit. What is that? Why would you keep doing that to yourself? It's, at what point? What's, what's the objective? The gospel. Do you think Jesus Christ wants his people who were out there to meant to save the lost to behave that way, to receive that kind of attention? This isn't about persecution. Persecution will come. Rejection will come for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Christ. <sighs> Am I making myself clear, friends? Listen to this, Second Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading a lot about Paul's writings here because seeing as Jay says Hatun is like Paul I showed you that clip you can watch the whole video I showed it to you yesterday now I Paul myself am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh arguing grumbling idle words babbling for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought cap into captivity to the obedience of christ and being ready to punish or disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled you see the full context of that scripture and how it was brought up in that video I shared uh, completely out of context the limits of Paul's authority we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves those who begin up themselves making themselves a name Paul wasn't like that but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise we however will not boast beyond measure but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us a sphere which especially includes you for we are not overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you for it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things beyond measure, that is, in other men's labours, but having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere. This is how churches were made. The gospel went out, souls were saved, discipleship began. And then they began to share one another's burdens, 
prayers, trials and tribulations, laboring together, and then they will multiply in that manner. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. Not hanging around in the same spot. Well, that man did that. I'll go and chime in and claim glory for myself for that work that he did. Such a wonderful excerpt of scripture to read and to understand. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. For not he who commends himself, J. Smith, Hutton, is approved, but whom the Lord commends. Friends, do you want me to go on? Commentary, that was Ephesians 5. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Ephesians 5, chapter 1. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Carry on. Hold on. But fornication and a, an all uncleanness or covetousness let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints neither filthiness nor foolish talking hatun, nor coarse jesting which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks for this you know that no fornicator unclean person no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God so he mentions that in that whole context. This is serious. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, these things, the wrath of God comes upon who? The sons of disobedience. Sons of disobedience, son of obedience and the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. This is elementary. Basic elementary belief system of our faith, you guys. What's so difficult to grasp here? Why are people have a problem with me saying Hathun's behaviour, her character, what she's been doing on and on and on is not scriptural, it's not biblical, it's wrong. And I have the word of God to back it up. That's not good enough. Then all you guys need to reconsider who you really believe in. What you really stand for. Who you really speak for. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Walk in wisdom. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. If it was so in that day, when Paul wrote this, how much more so now? We are living in the end times, you guys. We haven't got time to mess around. We need to walk with gentleness, with meekness, that our gentleness may be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. It says that. In First Peter chapter 4. Therefore do not be unwise. But understand what the, the, what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine which is dissipation. But be filled with the spirit. Speaking to one another. In psalms and hymns. Spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always. Oh my goodness. The word of God is so perfect. So pure. So simple. Triumph in Christ. There's, there's so many scriptures, you guys, to back up what I'm saying. This is why I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm familiar with the word of God in the sense that I know the nature, the character of believers. And so when we see it, when it's out of sync with what the Lord says in the word of God and the Holy Spirit fruits, we need to have a cause for concern. We don't just ignore it 
and we certainly don't applaud it. You partake of one another's sins in that manner. I have a heart for the sheep, I do. I have a heart for the sheep and it grieves me. It grieves me that it's celebrated. That's what's so bad about it. <clears throat> Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. What kind of fragrance is being spread at Speaker's Corner? I would like to know. Well, I can see it. I don't even need to smell it. I can see it. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved. There should be those who are being saved, right? Not on the internet, not sitting on YouTube saying I'm saved. Where's the, where, where are those ex-Muslims? The ones that you're debating, you keep going back and fighting and arguing with? Babbling, idle babblings, foolish jesting, coarse jestings. Is there any, any one of them coming back and saying, you know, Hathun, thank you for that, you know, you led me to Jesus. You're preaching about the gospel. Let me, or is it just the same record playing over and over and over again? Scratched record. Bring the fruit in the basket. <sighs> Among those who are perishing, to the one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, as so many, peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity. But as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. I have to move on. Acts 26. What was in 26 that I wanted to share? How he's um, defending himself. Very sensibly, very diplomatically. And Paul's post-conversion in life, he's giving an account. Agrippa parries Paul's challenge, and look what he says. Now, as he thus made his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. For the king before whom I also speak freely, knows these things. For I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention. Since this thing was not done in a corner, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You almost persuade me to become a Christian. That's the fruit, you guys. That wonderful spirit of reason. In gentleness, in meekness, respectfully. Not disrespectfully. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. He was in chains and he still had a self-controlled, peaceful spirit, attitude, behavior. He wasn't protesting disrespecting the police officers when they're telling you to hush hush and you're arguing with the police officers there no respect for authority Christians who are protesting for their rights you're not of Christ that is not the way of Christ you can negotiate and diplomatically present your case respectfully yeah of course just do what the apostle did just do what Jesus did it's not difficult. It really isn't. The simplicity is in Christ, but people confuse it, mess it up, reinvent the wheel because they think they know better, right? But when he had said these things, the king stood up as well as the governor and Bernice and those who sat with them. And when they had done, had gone inside, they talked among themselves saying, this man is doing nothing deserving of death or chains. They looked at his character, his behavior, his words. They listened and they made a good sound judgment, thinking thinking about it and reflecting, thinking he's done nothing 
deserving of death or chains. Then Agrippa said to Festus, This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. They had respect for him, you guys. They were spitting, being abusive. These are the authorities there. They had a lot of respect for him. Philippians chapter 1. Oh my goodness, I don't know how far I can go. Acts 7, Stephen. Stephen was martyred. He spoke. Let's read from here. But he, being full, I can't read the whole thing. You'll have to read the whole thing, friends. Chapter 7, book of Acts, verse um, 54. But when they heard these things, he was preaching the gospel, friends. He wasn't um, insulting, mocking, provoking to wrath, verbal abusing, antagonizing the crowd. He was presenting to them the wonderful mystery of God of salvation all the way from the Old Testament through to the present day when the Lord Jesus appeared. That's what Stephen, the martyr, was doing. For God's glory, he was martyred. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said look I see the heavens open and the son of man standing at the right hand of God they cried with a loud voice stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord they ambushed him they jumped him and they cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses lay down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul this is how martyrs behave. Martyr wannabe, Hatun. You want to be martyred? Is, re is that really true? That's what Jay Smith said. He said that you expect to be killed. And Jay welcomes it. That's so crazy. That's just the craziest thing I've heard. I have so much respect for Jay Smith. I've been following his work for so long, you guys. I've met him. In London, in Ilford, his church in Ilford, in Essex, he heard me um, give my testimony at a church. I met him in person, and I have a lot of respect for him. I'm just so shocked at some of the stuff he's come out with lately. <sighs> really shocked. It's sad to me. Sad. People begin right, but we know what we have to finish the race and end right. Provoking someone to anger. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and one given to anger causes much transgression. When Hathun provokes these people and they get upset and nasty, and she says, Why are you so upset? That's very, very narcissistic, very toxic behavior. You know damn right why they're upset. You're causing the upset. Sorry, friends. That's just the way it is. That's straight up. I'm going to give it to you straight as I see it. And majority, I've been giving you the word of God. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. That's the word of God, is it not? Yes. Can we agree? That a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another. This is where Paul is saying how we behave with one another. The church. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. But bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. If we are not to provoke one another to wrath, to anger how much more so the ones who are lost and don't know any better if you're trying to win them over to Christ you're actually making them angry intentionally that's the difference <laughs> intentionally provoking them that's wrong it's just wrong 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 end of story no argument no discussion A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. 
Be angry, do not sin, do not let the sun go down on your anger, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Classic, amazing scripture right there. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger quiets contention. Not ramps it up, it quiets contention. Love is patient, here we go. Love is patient. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, famous, famous, beautiful scripture. Love is patient, love is kind, right? Love does not envy, does not boast, is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. There is a lot of resentment there, contempt, anger, rage, right? This is visible. It can be cloaked with fancy language, like this is polemics, but that's what's at the heart of it. And Jesus said that even if we have anger or hate in our hearts, we are murderers. He wants us to be so unlike the world, you guys. We need to be different, we need to be better. We need to be better than that. Please, I'm pleading with you here. Romans 4, Paul mentioned this scripture, and this is what I mentioned yesterday. As it is written, Romans 4, 2, he's referring to the Old Testament um, prophecy. As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. He was so heartbroken about it, he even quoted the old scripture. You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. God's name is blasphemed among the Muslims because of the behavior of some Christians at Speaker's Corner. 